So, let us now consider model quality. That includes, of course, also the quality of the development and utilization process. We have covered already a good number of topics. In the third part of this module, we considered the activities, the model, so that we can guarantee that the model is really useful as an instrument in some utilization scenario or in a number of utilization scenarios. Last, we considered a dream about the future, that model and models will become programs in future. Now let's go with quality evaluation. Quality evaluation should be based on a number of criteria. We have macro criteria we would like to consider, like poor, smart, clear, for especially for characteristics of goal, purpose and function for the profile of a model. We should have also methods for somehow measuring internal quality, external quality and quality in use. We should have measures for assessment of model development. And finally, we need also methods to characterize the potential and the capacity of the model. The small abbreviations are characterizing parts and pieces we should have in our model assessment framework. Why we need to assess model quality? First of all, it is the complexity a model can reach. I'm using here as a simple example the metadata quality and integration uh, talk given by Peter Eichen in the DEMA framework. He showed that a proposed data model can be quite complex, uh, not only complex in the number of types and elements you are using, but also in the associations among these types. We already introduced the model capacity. The model provides some understanding of origin. The model provides an explanation or, or maybe some proper indication and facilities for making properties viewable. The model allows to provide variations and to support optimization. The model supports verification of hypotheses within a limited scope. The model supports construction of technical artifacts. The model supports control of things in reality, maybe. The model allows a replacement of things of reality and acts as a mediating means. These are only some of the elements that characterize model capacity. And whatever we need, we should take into consideration. And of course, we should master it somehow. Okay, let's now try to develop a general setting for quality assessment. That means a quality specification framework. You might start with a number of properties. For instance, for model speed, you can say, okay, fine, uh, the model speed should be accurate, well formed, coherent, well designed, has a low co or controllable redundancy, uh, is timely, is well uh, understood, is integrated, is complete, has no anomalies has an integrity, follows application rules, corresponds to established domains, satisfies the needs of the scenario and the functions uh, properly, or maybe is satisfied with the quality of the model suite and its utility. Uh, that means the community of practice is satisfied, and maybe there are less duplicate elements except the needed ones. Uh, I think we, should, we need some more sophisticated, maybe more systematic treatment instead of a number of properties we could state. Let's move towards a more systematic treatment. Before we go there, we should have some 
way to characterize what is the maturity of a model. We use here as a maturity model uh, the SPICE framework with six maturity levels known, declared, performing, executing, managed, established and controlled and professional. We might use also other uh, majority frameworks. We will come back to them in a minute. We have different properties and of course we should have some quality assessment methods and finally we can derive a quality passport for a, mob, uh, for a model that has quality characteristics and we have some kind of evaluation value maybe using this maturity level um, framework. We could also use what people use in experimental sciences like chemistry. You develop some kind of quality in use and external and internal quality framework by developing test goals and plans, by getting testers in the community of practice and choosing the real experimenters, by deriving task tasks and methods, by developing test scenarios and finally by performing a performance measurement. It could be um, some framework, how to evaluate things in a systematic manner. And now we need to know how we can handle it. I told you already that we are using the SPICE framework. Instead of the SPICE framework, we could use the CMMI capability majority model levels that have been introduced in the CMI community. You could say, okay, fine, a model is of an initial quality or of a repeatable quality or of a defined quality or managed quality or in given in a way that you are able to optimize. That means in this case you get first uh, into control, next you get into consistency, next you get in predictability. Then you have maybe sustainability and then you have the way how to improve a model in a proper way. There are a lot of frameworks that uh, support this CMMI from the Software Engineering Institute. Uh, we can however also use our frameworks that we have been already showing here with majority levels 0 to 5 by SPICE community. And I will use this 0 to 5 level for declaring majority of a model and by declaring on and evaluating the model characteristics in a proper way. We have a majority level 0, anything is done ad hoc, there are no best practices, that is a typical style how we are doing if we are layman modelers or if we are somehow uh, learning how to model. It could be made at a maturity level 1, though it is well declared and it is well defined and anything is understood. Majority level 2 would be you are modeling and modeling activities are performed and executed in a systematic way. That means in this case the results become checkable, the background is well understood and the goals are explicit. Majority level 3 means additionally that the model development is well understood. And the model uses, and the modeling process also uses standards. The justification is explicit, we have well documented models, and the improvement tactics are also given. Majority level 4 leads to an establishment, a proper establishment. That means in this case you know the quality, you have, you know the potential and the fitness, and of course you can adapt all this to the profile that you really have in mind, maybe to other functions and other uh, scenarios as well. Majority level 5 is of course some kind of a dream level, then in this case anything is well understood, predictable and optimizable and for this reason you can have some kind of even of automatic improvement and maintenance, 
and maintenance of models. This can be done, for instance, on the basis of universal models or on the basis of generic models, as we have been considering it. Or you can use it on the basis of reference models. In this case, you have a number of characteristics you can directly give uh, that describe somehow the model and then you can develop a proper framework. Establish a purpose, identify its uh, application area, specify generic models, analysis approach, analysis methods, evolution support, application procedures would be uh, the steps in such a framework. It could be done in the waterfall technique, it could also be done in some spiral model for development and also in some spiral and wall, waterfall or agile model of model application. You can uh, also characterize the quality characteristics in the proper form. It is however important that if you have a number of characteristics, they are interdependent. That means in this case we have to declare the interdependency of our characteristics. They can be based on attributes, they can be based on those that are coming from the internal, external or a quality and use level. You could have quality properties that are based on functional um, descriptions or how it is functioning, on known functional uh, descriptions or on structural descriptions. You could have also say, okay, fine, the dependency uh, comes from a class that is maybe a model or two model characteristics are contradictory, are maybe over yeah, loading, overlapping, um, being in some kind of competition with other uh, properties. And of course you could say, okay, fine, your model as a work product uh, has, of course, some product characteristics. That is the uh, Jakola Thalheim IET software special issue a journal paper where we declare how to do this kind of quality characteristics specification in a proper way. Before going to this kind of assessment, let's go first what kind of characteristics we would like to have. You can see, okay, fine, uh, quality characteristics could be external quality characteristics or internal characteristics or quality and use characteristics that would give us directly also a classification of quality characteristics so that we can handle those in a more proper form. The most important are, of course, since we want to use as humans the model, understandability, learnability, operability, adaptiveness and appropriateness. If you would like to use models as programs, then in this case we should have, of course, an external quality that is again based on the internal quality of the model. These are in general static qualities of a model. That means these are properties that are given for a model. You can also have dyna dynamic qualities within a selected development process of, as we described already in, say, in chapter 12. And then in this case you can characterize which level you have been reaching so far. Again, it is a little bit too much, too many characteristics. Maybe we can do it in a more sophisticated, more proper way. First of all, maybe we should say, okay, fine, what we want really to have as a property. For instance, we would like to go for an assessment of correctness, generality, usefulness, comprehensibility, and novelty. Again, you would have some kind of sub-characteristics you could use for, for somehow describing at what level you would have uh, a model f be fit for what the model has been assigned or to do. Then in this case you say, okay fine, we have now again a good number of characteristics. Uh, these characteristics should be used for assessing the model and also the modeling process and also the utilization process. The classical way in software engineering is to give some kind of metrics measuring by numeric value the fitness of an element in a software process. There is a better logical characterization 
uh, in the software engineering uh, paper I mentioned already uh, for these quality um, criteria and characteristics. Again, uh, this is a good number. But in reality, you don't need this large number. Let's say if you would like to use a model for realization of a system or a system extension, then in this case, this function would require that the model is correct, first of all. Second, it would require that the model is sufficiently general and sufficiently simple. The other criteria and characteristics are less uh, important. For this reason, you could concentrate on three criteria. In a similar form, you could have some kind of important criteria and characteristics for communication functions of models. If the function of an instrument in a scenario is communication, then in this case you can say, okay, fine, it should be useful. It should be also, but less important, comprehensible. It should, maybe also, and even again, less important, previously unknown, because of, if it is already known, then you don't need it in communication functions. Then in this case, we can neglect the other properties or less, or consider the other proper, uh, properties and characteristics as less important. That means we could concentrate again. If we consider the interdependence of quality categories, then in this case, we can say, okay, fine. Since we want to satisfy the user needs, then we have user quality needs that give us directly an understanding which quality and use parameters are important. Those user quality needs contribute to the specification of external quality requirements that could be again expressed as external quality parts. So in this case we have now maybe even as a workflow for developing quality categories and quality characteristics according to the function a model has in a scenario. Since the quality and use characteristics are the most important ones, let us consider them a little bit more in detail. Effectiveness declares, declares the capability of a model to enable users to achieve specific goals from a quantitative and qualitative point of view in a specific, spe well-specified context of use. It has typically three sub-characteristics, that is timeliness, adequacy, and effectiveness compliance. Timeliness means the extent to which data or the model is sufficiently up to date for the task at hand. That would mean in this case that is equal fine. We can directly check whether a model really enables us to use it as an instrument in such a way that the function is really properly supported by the model. Adequacy is our adequacy. Effectiveness compliance means, of course, in this case, we would like to have not the optimal, but a good way of functioning for a model. So this is the first set of characteristics. A second set of characteristics would be productivity. Whether the model enables us to do the task properly. Again, if we use the quality and use characteristics from the ISO AC standard 25 or 12, then in this case productivity would directly be somehow describable by relevance, interpretability and productivity compliance. Again, this can be given instead of a matrix by a logical formula. So it says, okay, fine, this part of the model is relevant of the model speed. That means in this case you directly specify which part is to which extent applicable and helpful for the task at hand. Or in our case, for the function we have in mind. Interpretability means again that you can 
directly derive the properties of the model and of course the justification and of course the adequacy of the model in such a way that the user can comprehend it. Productivity compliance means in this case that is the capability of data, this is a data standard, to adhere to standards, conventions and or regulations in force and similar rules relating to productivity. Now we can transfer directly this productivity compliance again to some quality in use properties of models. The third category is safety, the capability of data to achieve an acceptable level of risk, uh, not to harm people, the business properties uh, or the environment. Again, this can be somehow specified and given by the safety rele relevance and by the safety compliance. Again, you can use now that the data are really properly somehow supporting safety, whatever safety in this case would be for a computer system. And the last one would be satisfaction, the capability of data that satisfies users in a specific context of use. Again, you have sub-properties you should consider, credibility, accessibility and satisfaction compliance. So in this case we can use these criteria directly for declaration of our specific model properties. For accuracy, for instance, you can say, okay, fine. Uh, if you consider data, then you look whether the value is really valid, whether it is really the right value, whether it has the right representation, and in this case, whether it is accurate. The same way we could use also for model elements and also for the model and the model suite. So in this case, you can now derive directly the same ways of measuring our quality and the fitness of the model, at least for the adequacy and accuracy dimension or characteristics. In this case, you can directly struggle with the sources of inaccuracy. Some of them are maybe initial bad, some of them are based on problems with the data, delivery or some data are moving and restructuring or something like that or uh, you have a problem with using. That means in this case you can characterize directly what is the problem in the model and then you can say directly okay fine how to improve the model if this improvement is really necessary. You can also look for um, events that cause inaccuracy. In this case you can again look for a number of events that happens within, in the modeling development, uh, the modeling processes, modeling development or model utilization. And in this case, you can directly say, okay, fine. In which case, accuracy can be somehow overcome. What in this case you would have is something like a model suite steward. There's nothing else we can generalize again from software engineering, a business leader or somebody in our community of practice that really handles in a proper way the quality of our model, Identif by identifying requirements, by handling which model elements, definitions, values have the assigned quality, by handling the compliance, having an appropriate security control. You can have also some ways how to improve and analyze quality and how to identify these issues. So in this case you would have a quality, let's say, treatment by somebody that could be the same person as the developer who is responsible for a proper handling of the quality of a model. You need it, I take it from a pretty simple slide for even process chains. You need it, of course, for dependable construction of systems. If you are using the model as a mediator between what is currently given and what should be developed, then in this case you can say, okay, fine, 
maybe you can check whether such kind of even chain process is properly correct or has a number of flaws you should handle in a proper way. That is was described by Andreas Speck and his uh, assistants and his wife by in, in the MMM compendium published by the Quarter five years ago. Then in this case you have now maybe a treatment. And then in this case you can say okay fine. I have now directly either a specification of equality characteristics or you are able to control it or to apply it or somehow to establish it. Maybe you have additional facilities for handling satisfaction of quality properties in a proper way, for integrating quality management in the optimization process, and maybe for generalizing and using the experience gained for innovation and adaptation. That is a classical level approach where we can say, okay, fine, at a certain stage we have only described the quality characteristics or specified it. Later you have added procedures to control it or to apply it or to establish a proper management of the quality. Okay, we have however a problem. And the problem is that some requirements might lead to conflicts with other requirements, other quality characteristics. You can do it a little bit more formally as I gave it here. We say, okay, fine, you have quality characteristics. We design, develop a method so that we have a proper, let's say, a transfer of one quality property to another one. And then you can say, okay, fine, in my quality set or quality characteristic set, uh, characteristics one is somehow conflicting with characteristics two or maybe is somehow affecting the quality of another quality property and then you can say okay fine then you can use some kind of uh, evaluation process to evaluate what is really is the impact of a quality property against another quality characteristics and then you have to compromise the quality characteristics for a model in such a way that you have at least some kind of optimal treatment of all quality characteristics in which you are interested. That would lead somehow to maybe a special specification as we do it here. We say, okay, fine, in our development process, uh, we have a change of a model to another model. Uh, you may change characteristics. You may be obliged uh, to handle some quality characteristics in a proper way. And it could be bound and somehow uh, based on uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, values that characterize these um, quality fitness. In this case, you can derive also some kind of quality declaration schema. So you can do it in a very formal way. If, however, you need it, you get the focus. You give a description, you give the measurement or a, somehow the logical formula to specify it. You, require, you have some observations on the model that result in data. You have a result of your evaluation. You have some mappings and you have some associations, especially among the characteristics that are conflicting and supporting each other. And you, have, you might have also a quality control portfolio if you have this kind of multi-level process of quality management. Then in this case you say, okay, fine, I can have also some kind of control task, a description of those uh, control uh, tasks in our control portfolio with some participants participating in evaluating our model and of course in having some kind of declaration about restrictions. That would be the general framework for handling the model quality. Let's now go a little bit more deeper into which properties we really should handle at which level. 
and I would like to use in this case our model definition again. A model is of course specified according to a function it plays in the scenario, that means it has a resulting profile. A model is typically based on a deep model where you somehow add the normal model you can, um, can easily extract from the origin. The model has a potential. Maybe the model development process is working properly. Maybe you have also to consider the capacity and potential of a model in the proper form. Okay, fine, let's go for these characteristics first. Goals, purposes, functions that somehow specify our profile of the model. And we need some macro principles for the model being. Okay? The first one would be pure. Pure stays for P positively stated, U for understood and understandable, R for relevant and rewarding, and E for ethnically correct. That means in this case you say what the model should be if you consider only the goal. Positively stated means of course that the goal has really achieved and the model is somehow minimal according to what we want to have. Ethnically correct, I think that is a thing that we don't consider so much in computer science, but we should also have some kind of good practices in the world of origins that we are supporting. That is the goal. Adding to the goal methods, you come to the purpose. And the purpose can be specified by some kind of smart specification. Specifically and, and preciseness, meaningful, attainable and achievable, relevant and timely or time-faced. I mean, in this case again, you have a number of or a bundle of characteristics you can use for specifying the smart part. Adding now the scenarios where a model is used, you come to the function. And the function can be again evaluated by some kind of, let's say, clear evaluation. It should be challenging, it should be really a good instrument, it should be legal, so that you can use it without any problems. It should be environmental sound, according to the scenario that you use the model. It should be appropriate, and of course it should be also somehow lead to results, and in this case it should be also recordable, or recorded at least. These are the profile evaluation characteristics. Furthermore, you have a deep model, quality assessment or characteristics. For deep, I would propose um, better step, and name it better step instead of best, how we do it in software engineering. It should be scientific, culture reflecting, technological founded, environment aware, and paradigmatic conform. So that the model is not changing the world, the model it can be really used in a proper way without revising whatever is in the deep model. Okay, then we come maybe to the potential in capacity. Okay, we have here two characteristics we can use. One typically uh, a typical characteristic is the SWOT evaluation. Strangers, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of a model. You can use also a double SWOT, strategic and tactical perspectives somehow evaluated. And then in this case is okay fine. What are the strangers, the weaknesses and the opportunities and the threats of a model? That is for potential and capacity one way. Another way is the scope evaluation. That is mainly characterizing really the potential, or better saying, the surplus value of a model. Situation, competence, obstacles, prospects and expectations. These can be described directly sentence by sentence for a model and then you can say, okay, fine, now I know what is the potential and this is what the capacity of a model. For the development process, I didn't find a proper acronym and used the word 
quartz sand, quartz sand uh, as a German word for developing some, for evaluating the model development process. They have a quality control. You are causality oriented. You are action oriented. You are risk oriented, goal oriented. In a systematic way, your development model should be appropriate, and it should anything what is developed it should be necessary and the model is somehow durable and continuous. I think the causality uh, treatment uh, is maybe the most um, difficult one, but uh, the rest uh, can be somehow associated to the model development process. The model application process, however, is somehow evaluatable by our profile evaluation we have been giving in the first stage. Okay, then in this case is okay fine. When we consider the ROMP we have been considering in chapter 13 and in before in uh, chapter 10, then you need to have enablers and supporters for quality and those matters too. One is of course as an somehow enabler the language quality. We considered already the language property when we discussed in chapter 4 the sapir wharf principle of linguistic relativity. I would like to remember only that this is a typical characteristic for an enabler. The same would be also for the supporter. The supporter are mainly coming from the world of regions you should consider in a systematic way and for this reason you have of course your supporters. Okay, let's summarize. We considered in this lecture mainly the mode quality characterization. We didn't consider so much the model assessment. I think uh, that is a bit too much for this lecture to consider the model assessment in detail. It can be done whenever you need it for a certain kind of model and we should, should come back to it a little bit later. So, in this case, the quality evaluation procedures we can apply maybe are similar to those that we use in software engineering or in quality management or and in engineering. The next lecture in this course will be model-based engineering that is what is really done currently with engineering where the model is used as a mediator. That is use, useful for computer science and also useful for computer engineering and should continue our categorization of the kinds of the stereotypes of models that we have been discussing in chapter 10. So in this case we use now our knowledge in order to characterize how a proper model-based engineering can be really properly done and applied in our cases, whatever kind of model we are considering. Thank you. Okay, time to manage it properly. Now we go to engineering.